When Air India Flight 171 crashed just seconds after takeoff, it shocked the world. A Boeing 787 Dreamliner, supposedly one of the safest jets ever built, fell out of the sky. But what if this wasn't just a tragic accident? What if the real cause was hidden deep inside Boeing's own factory? What investigators uncovered points to something far more disturbing than a single failure, a broken system that may have doomed the plane before it ever took off. Here's why. So, let's get into the nitty gritty. How could a Boeing 787, one of the most advanced airliners ever built, fall apart so quickly? The truth is, the plane was flawed long before it ever left the ground. The Boeing 787 Dreamliner, touted as a marvel of modern aviation, was built with revolutionary technology and efficiency. But somewhere along the line, Boeing's ambition to rush this plane into service led to severe shortcuts in quality control. First, let's talk about those 900 fuselage fasteners. And I'm not talking about a minor misstep here. 900 fasteners installed the wrong way, in critical, load-bearing zones of the fuselage. And here's the kicker, with no nuts to hold them in place. These fasteners, which should have securely held the plane's body together, were instead just a cosmetic fix, there to look like they were working, but not actually serving their purpose. Boeing admitted this fault after the fact, but here's the real problem. They didn't stop the line. They kept shipping planes out anyway. Can you imagine? A huge multi-million dollar plane, and Boeing simply trusted that a few bad bolts wouldn't cause serious issues later on. But they didn't act. They didn't inspect the planes properly. The consequences were brushed aside. Then there's the fuselage cracks. These weren't small defects. They were cracks that could compromise the entire structure of the aircraft. And how did Boeing handle them? By painting over them, covering them with layers of sealant and gloss to make it look like everything was fine. But under that shiny paint, hidden fractures that were simply ignored. These cracks were swept under the rug just to keep production flowing. Cosmetic fixes meant to cover up dangerous flaws. But wait, there's more. While Boeing was cutting corners on the plane's frame, it was also slapping together substandard parts. Some of the hydraulic tubes, those are the systems that control the plane's movement, were dented, rusted, or even mislabeled as quality approved. And this wasn't some small batch of defective parts, it was thousands of them. They came from a supplier that had been caught in 2024 for fraudulent certifications, shipping nearly 5,000 substandard components straight into Boeing's production line. These weren't minor issues. Dented parts and rusty components made their way into critical systems like the landing gear and hydraulics. Yet these parts were installed without a second thought because the pressure to meet deadlines was overwhelming. How did Boeing explain this? Well, they didn't. Instead of slowing down or investigating, they just kept moving forward. The excuse was always the same. Production deadlines. The company's need for speed on the assembly line was so intense that safety became an afterthought. Workers were pushed beyond their limits, with some spending 12 to 16 hours a day on the floor, exhausted and under pressure to meet deadlines. It was the perfect storm. Dangerous defects hiding under layers of paint and paperwork, substandard parts being installed, and engineers silenced for questioning anything that might slow down the line. Boeing's solution? Ignore it. Sweep it under the rug. Pretend it's not happening. Don't fix the problem. Just keep delivering the planes. And the airline customers, like Air India, kept accepting these planes, never realizing that the Dreamliner they were getting was essentially a ticking time bomb. So here's the core of it. Boeing wasn't just failing at the small things. They were failing at the big things. The things that really mattered when lives were on the line. And in the rush to meet production targets, they chose speed over safety. Again and again. But here's the real kicker. They knew about it. Engineers and whistleblowers raised the alarm multiple times. But Boeing didn't care. They chose to push through defects. They prioritized speed over quality. And that, right there, was the recipe for disaster. 
So what really enabled all these defects to go unchecked for so long? Was it just a series of mistakes? Number, it was a culture, a toxic culture that prioritized speed, deadlines, and profits over everything else, especially safety. At Boeing, speaking up wasn't just discouraged, it was punished. If you raised concerns about safety, quality, or defects, you weren't given a medal for doing the right thing. You were transferred to a less critical role. You were marginalized. You were pushed out. The company didn't want to hear about problems, especially if those problems threatened their timeline or their bottom line. Take the story of John Barnett, for example. He wasn't just some random engineer. Barnett had 32 years of experience at Boeing. He was a quality control manager, deeply trusted with ensuring the integrity of the Dreamliner's production. And what did he find? Metal shavings left inside 787 near flight control wiring. That's a huge issue. Shavings like that could cause short circuits and failure in critical systems mid-flight. But when Barnett raised the alarm, he was silenced. Instead of listening to Barnett's warning, Boeing transferred him out of the Dreamliner program and sidelined him. He even took his concerns to the FAA, only to be ignored. This was a man who spent decades building a reputation of professionalism. And instead of being hailed as a hero for flagging a serious safety threat, he was treated like a problem. And this wasn't just Barnett. There were multiple engineers and inspectors who tried to speak up about problems at the factory. The result? Fear. Retaliation. Punishment. One whistleblower from Boeing even described watching co-workers physically jump on fuselage panels, slamming their bodies into the plane to force the panels into place just so they could meet the production deadline. Think about that. Boeing was literally telling employees to treat planes like cheap toys, not multi-million dollar machines that are supposed to carry hundreds of people safely across the world. But the culture of fear didn't stop there. It wasn't just about what happened when employees raised issues. It was also about what happened when they didn't. Engineers who chose not to speak out and ignored safety concerns felt the immense pressure to keep production lines moving. 12 to 16 hour shifts were the norm. And when a problem arose, it was easier to pretend it wasn't happening than risk slowing down production. Some employees described their shifts as being fueled by adrenaline and Red Bull. They were working in a pressure cooker. And let's not forget the cost of silence. While the engineers, the workers, and the whistleblowers faced career consequences for doing the right thing, Boeing was left to carry on as if nothing was wrong. In fact, the company's focus was almost exclusively on hitting production targets and safety concerns were brushed under the rug if they slowed down the process. The consequences of this culture are deadly clear. John Barnett, after years of fighting to have his concerns heard, eventually retired early in 2017, citing unbearable stress and health problems from the constant pressure and retaliation he faced. But that wasn't the end of the story. Barnett filed a whistleblower lawsuit against Boeing, fighting for justice for what he believed were willfully ignored defects that could have led to disaster. But in March 2024, just days before a deposition, Barnett was found dead, shot in a parking lot. The official ruling was suicide, but many who knew him raised questions about whether it was truly suicide or something more sinister. The fact that he was fighting Boeing when it happened only deepens the suspicion. How did Boeing respond? They denied everything, of course. They claimed they had an open-door policy for concerns, but how many people lost their careers or faced retaliation for trying to speak out? The numbers are staggering, and the deaths of employees like Barnett are a haunting reminder that this culture didn't just threaten safety, it buried the truth along with it. Now we get to the real technical nightmare. What caused the crash of Air India Flight 171 to fall from the sky so suddenly? Could it have been a simple mechanical failure, or was there something lurking in the system, something invisible? Let's start with the metal shavings Barnett warned about. These tiny bits of debris were often left behind inside the 787's electrical systems. Metal slivers, sharp enough to cut into wiring and cause short circuits, were being ignored at Boeing. And if one of those slivers got loose in the middle of a flight, it could cause a critical failure in the plane's electrical systems. And when the Dreamliner loses electrical power, it's not just inconvenient, it's catastrophic. Well, that's exactly what happened to AI-171. 
the emergency ram air turbine deployed right after takeoff, which only happens when the main electrical system fails. Both engines failed. The backup power didn't kick in. That's not just bad luck. That's a systems failure, possibly caused by an undetected defect, like the kind of metal debris Barnett warned about, but we're not done. There's also the issue of defective parts that were ignored. Imagine flying with a deformed valve or a miswelded component, parts that had been flagged as faulty but never replaced. There's no way to know which parts made it into AI-171, but Boeing's documented issues with defective parts suggest this wasn't a rare occurrence. The components that were never replaced could have led to critical malfunctions. After AI-171 went down, everything changed. Regulators moved fast. India grounded its Dreamliners. The FAA and ESA started quietly reviewing their certifications. Behind closed doors, there was talk of something Boeing once considered unthinkable, pulling the Dreamliner's airworthiness certificate entirely. And you can see why. Fasteners installed backward, cracks hidden under paint, rusty parts relabeled and approved, metal shavings next to critical wiring. It's not just a list of failures, it's a blueprint for disaster. Airlines took notice. Qantas, KLM, Emirates, major Dreamliner customers started asking hard questions. Some are backing out of orders. Others are quietly pausing deliveries. And guess who's loving this? Airbus. They're swooping in with the A350 and sealing deals that Boeing can't afford to lose. Deliveries are delayed. Confidence is wrecked. And passengers? They're asking the one question Boeing never wanted to hear. Am I flying on a plane built on silence, pressure, and denial? And that's what it comes down to. This isn't just about one crash, or one factory, or even one aircraft. It's about a system that rewarded speed over safety, and a culture that looked the other way until it was too late. Now Boeing stands at a crossroads. One path leads to reform, the other, another tragedy. So here's the question. Will Boeing finally wake up and fix the damage, or will the cost of silence be paid again in lives?